in terms of the offensive line yeah. and the struggles, are, are you yeah. seeing progress? Are you concerned? What, what's your there's glimpses, and then obviously there's reasons for some, not, I wouldn't say concern, but disappointment, just because uh, we've, we've executed and practiced, you know, and done some things, and it just had consistently shown up, you know, in the game. Um, the pre-snap penalty Saturday was a major, major issue that we got, got to address that, get that cleaned up this week for Friday night. You know, the snaps, right, um, get, and addressing that and getting that cleaned up. So uh, we have willing guys, you know, and just got to take practice, uh, and transfer it to the game, you know, with whether it's 65 snaps we got against Tennessee or I can't remember if it was 50 something or 60 against James Madison with the new clock rules, right? You're not getting, you know, those 80 play games as frequently anymore. So, it, which puts a more premium on each snap, right? That we have that to execute it. A couple of the guys mentioned it, and you just hit on it the idea that in practice they're seeing their keys, they're yeah. making the right, and then in games it's yeah. falling apart. What do you do to get it to carry over? Well, I mean, just reinstill confidence in the guys. Like, we believe in you. That's why you're out there. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. You've seen the looks. You're prepared. Just play. You know, don't overthink. And, you know, it, it, here's the deal, right? It's obvious. We haven't, we haven't won a game in a while. Guys could be pressing, right, to, to perform at a high level to help us win. All these, everybody in this program wants to win, right? But we don't have to press, all right? Just go out and play free and, and it'll take care of yourself. In terms of the pass protection, um, would you like to be doing more tight ends and running yeah. backs out into the pattern, but you got to hold them in, or what's kind of your? Yeah, I mean it's situational, right? Obviously, um, when you look at us third downs in the first two weeks, we've had way too many third and longs. So, you know, in that situation, we got to be able to protect and get the ball down the field. So, we're not able to get our backs out as freely in that in that case. So, if we can be better on, on first down efficiency and running the ball, you know, the attempts are there, but we just wasn't as efficient running the ball. You know, as we like, it still put us in some second long, third and long, you know, positions that are not advantageous. So um, third down is a result of a first, second down. Last thing on, on this, um, Calandria's ability to pass out of a broken pocket, yeah. to, to keep his head up looking yeah. downfield. Um, how valuable is that? Does yeah. Tony bring that also? Yeah. And with where your line is, is yeah. that just something you need? Yeah, so to answer your question, it's a great asset as a quarterback for Calandria. That's your second question. Um, Tony's capable of doing that as well. But, uh, you know, Calandria, and we knew that that would happen if he broke out contain his ability to extend the plays, which he did. You know, the long touchdown to Kobe Pace, the long completion not there to uh, PJ was all extension of the plays and a good scramble one time as well. Um, offensive line-wise, you know, there's going to be, unfortunately, there's going to be a, some breakdowns of protection. That's just natural. Uh, with that, but obviously we know we got to clean that up and clean up the pocket and uh, for the quarterback. Yeah. Watching back on film, what kind of stood out in particular about Anthony Colandrea and just yeah. how he handled himself? Um, he, he handled himself right. He was he was not phased uh, in the moment. Uh, very in tune in the game. He made some good checks for us in the run game and, and with protections. And the kid just has a lot of confidence and, and savviness to play football. In addition Sing to Calandria, at, at one point the other day you had Harrison, Jaden Gibson, J.R. Wilson on the field at yep. the same time. Are you encouraged by the youth, some of those, yes. those, those young guys? I, I, we are, and we got to play guys, right, because it's a long football season. You know, even Dakota Twitty, you know, be coming in the mix, and he'll play some more for us and build us some more depth and rotation the receiver position so that Malachi doesn't have to play every snap or Malik Washington because those other kids are capable of making plays as well. Do you feel like you still have the same commitment to the run game going into yeah. this weekend, just seeing the efficiency last year or last week? Yeah, we're not, we're not going to abandon that, right? We're not going to go out there and throw it 70 times in this game, right? We're still going to run the ball, right, because that's just part of who we are, and we, we, we're cleaning it up. It'll become more efficient and then take our shots when they're there, and if we have to drop back the pass, you know, then we'll do that and clean up our protection issues, but we're not changing who we are and what we're doing. What do you think? anticipate uh, Chris, Jimmy Chris' role will be? Um, I know he said he was – back last week, yeah. but maybe not yeah. all the way. <laughs> I mean, I can give the kid credit, right? He tried to battle. Uh, probably wasn't 100%, but he's got another week of prep underneath him. His body's feeling a little bit better from the fall camp injury, so he's still being in the rotation as well. I mean, you know, the, th the thing about it up front, the O-line and in the receiver room, there's going to be rotations, right? we got to find the right mix of guys that can consistently put it together, you know, for a series, for a half, for a quarter, whatever the case may be.
are opposing defenses trying to stop the run for, with you guys for uh, JMU to stack the box? You know, it, JMU, that's, that's kind of who they are, you know? And that's why we was able to get a, a bunch of explosive passes in that regard. But that's who they are. They were second in the country last year in rush defense, you know. Um, again, we popped the first one for 80, you know, so that would have changed the thing statistically, obviously, in that regard. So um, it's no doubt, right? We believe in running the football, and people know that. So they're going to try to stack it. We just got to do a better job of protecting so when we throw it, we can capitalize on the stack boxes. How are these guys in terms of run defense this week? Yeah, they're, they're built like a Big Ten, Big Ten team, right? They're pretty stout up front in their their three four structure. Their linebackers, you know, the edge guys are two hundred sixty plus pounds. You know, linebackers are two hundred thirty. So they're built, you know, for that Big Ten lead there to do it. But we, we believe we have some things we can do to give us an advantage and, and run the football this week, and then you know take our chances with with throwing the ball down the field. Charlotte. Had some passing yeah. success in this one. Do you, do you see anything there you might can exploit? Or? Well, you know, again, you know, they are kind of similar to James Madison, right? They want to try to stop the run. That's their DNA as a program. And so that allows maybe some opportunities in, in the passing game that Charlotte took advantage of. Hopefully, we get the same same success uh, Friday night. I know you indicated after the game and Coach Elliott did too yeah. that you don't lose your job for an injury. Yeah. Is Tony the guy on Saturday? Yeah. If he's ready to go, he's the guy. Again, don't lose your job for injury because he's earned that spot. And it, but what it shows to everybody that we knew, we feel like we have really good, two good quarterbacks. You know, that can go out and, and play for us at a high level to help us win. So, Tony's available. He's out there to start it. Yes. You said if twice. Is that? Is there some doubt in terms of like what was he able to do today? Yeah, he's he's been doing everything good. But again, it's forty eight hours away. You never know what can happen. So. <laughs> Uh, first time in 13 years you guys are playing Maryland. Uh, yeah. What is it like to kind of be a part of that renewed rivalry? You know, uh, I haven't been to Maryland myself since 2012 at North Carolina State. So just from the standpoint of it's an old ACC type competition, I think it would be exciting for the fans and the alumni of both institutions. And we're just looking forward to the opportunity to get on the left side of the column instead of the right side of the column with a W. So. How desperate do you feel guys are for, yeah. for that first victory? I wouldn't say desperate. I mean, it's just a competitive nature, man. You, we all want to, we all want to win, and we're the kids are doing the things to do that, and you know, uh, we'll reap our reward in due time. And hopefully, hopefully it's this Friday. Yeah. There, there were times you had some really nice runs against JMU. Yeah. Are you encouraged? Yeah, because you know, again, I, I look at it like in a couple of different ways, right? Obviously, statistically, it didn't show up as being good. But when we was in the red zone, right, we were three or three touchdowns. And one run was, I think, nine yards. Another run uh, was three or whatever. But And then we had some other runs down in the red zone that kept us ahead of schedule. So in that regard, it's very efficient, right? Now, out in the open field, there were some times where it wasn't as efficient as we would like. But when I look at it in the total package, well, the statistics doesn't show that. But in situations, it did show we were effective running the football. Mike's physicality yeah. in the red zone, is that something kind of new this year? You know, year? Um, I think it all goes back really, we saw flashes of it last fall, and then, you know, the spring, we really saw like, okay, this guy's different, right? He was in better shape, better condition, obviously had gone through a tragedy and, and those type things, but the way he came back the spring was like, if we get this kind of guy next fall, then we got, we got something, because he is running very physical and violent, um, down there, and that's, that was a big contributing factor in the red zone last week against James Madison. Would you like to get more out of the, and I know we talked about yeah. pass protection, but uh, out of the tight ends and yeah. the passing game, if you were able to Yeah, out? <laughs> well, you know, when you're talking about the pass protection, so there's some times where we have to keep them in and protection, so they're not going to get those opportunities in the passing game. So I think as we move along and keep progressing, there'll be more opportunities for the guys once we secure up our, our protections. And how would you evaluate their performance blocking in yeah. both run and pass run? You know, both, uh, you know, game ones, I thought Sacken and, and Mitch did a good job of what we asked them to do. You know, last week, you know, Josh Rawls came in and, and contributed in a good role. You know, Mitch played a lot of snaps, uh, but he, he, he did good uh, in his in his role there. You had some success thrown to your backs. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, that, that's another asset that they bring to us, all three guys, whether it's Kobe, Mike, or Paris. Um, and – like back to uh, Mike's question earlier, like that could take some relief off the quarterback and the protection if we can get the ball out quick to a back if they're not covering it. So 